So hi, Microbe Hunter here again. And today I'm gonna do again one of those semi live stream type of videos, uh, which are pre-recorded. And today I would like uh, to put my cheek cells under the microscope with a little twist, uh, because I would like to show you also the difference between uh, phase contrast, uh, bright field, and also differential interference contrast. So I'm going to show you three different imaging techniques. And I also would like uh, to stain the cells using methylene blue. It's called Löffler's solution, which is uh, not a concentrated, it's a dilute uh, methylene blue solution and uh, this is actually uh, quite the popular stain because uh, it's a general purpose stain. Yeah, and because it's a non-edited video, um, I'm just going to start talking and uh, it might take a little longer than normal and uh, if there are any mistakes that I make, I'll just leave them in there. But first I wanted to run you through the materials used. That does remind me of Bob Ross, run you through the colors. <laughs> okay, um, here, this is uh, basically, of course, uh, methylene blue, you already know this. I need some tap water, and a pipette, um, these are disposable pipettes. Uh, you can also use, uh, I don't know, more fancy ones like these. Um, that was really not so important. Um, Q-tips uh, to pick up uh, the sample from the cheek cells, um, of course, uh, microscope slides. And uh, what I'm, I'll be using is, is I'll be using those uh, larger cover glasses. Um, they're actually quite a bit larger. Um, uh, you don't have to use those, but I consider it uh, kind of convenient because you simply have more area. Of course, uh, the normal cover glass size is uh, yeah, it's much smaller. Whatever you have is fine, okay? Uh, that's not so much the point. Um, so um, I'll be doing now the following. Um, I'll be picking up a sample um, from inside my cheek. You can also use the inside of your, you know, the, your finger, basically to scratch off some cells from the inside of your cheek and then uh, rub the cells here on, on the slide. Uh, I won't be doing this. Uh, yeah, I just, I'm gonna, looks better this way. Mm -hmm. Rotate, it's just like not quite as uncomfortable as the corona test. Okay. <laughs> so, and, yeah, or here. Okay, rotate the whole thing. And there should be now plenty of cells on here. And oh, I need to uh, change the position again here. Okay. So, what I'll be doing is I will simply uh, spread the cells uh, on the slide here and uh, by rubbing it back and forth. Um, you're also breaking up uh, cell clusters. And of course, you can see that there is something on here already. Um, yeah, you might not be able to see it. Maybe in the reflection of the light, uh, there is uh, yeah, clearly some stuff uh, on here already. And what I'll be doing um, is, is I'll simply be adding a, yeah, a, a drop of water. Okay. Um, and uh, the cover glass goes on top. If I only can pick it up. And uh, yeah. Um, all of the excess uh, water, okay, and get some tissue paper here. Now, all of the excess water can be removed. Uh, people, some people like to use filter paper. Um, I, I do it the cheap way. <laughs> um, because if there's too much water, then of course uh, the um, objectives might uh, become wet. And then you need to clean the objectives again. So, yeah. And uh, also because the cells are quite thin, um, because of the depth of field. So what I'll be doing now is, is I'm uh, going to switch uh, the, um, I'm going to switch now um, over to, the camera is on. Uh, now, yeah, yes, and now you should be able to see what I can see under the microscope. So let me turn this on. Does this work, does this not work? What is this? Okay, okay. So, oh yeah, that's the dust and the dirt of the condenser. Let's put this here on here. Okay, so let's start off with bright field. I need to flip this out. See, uh, I need to get the light adjusted properly. Ah, I got the wrong filter in here. I got to rotate over. It's too bright. I cannot see anything. The, the air bubble might help uh, me to focus it. Uh, you don't even see the air bubble because it's still too bright. Here it is. Okay, yeah. You know, this is seems to be a fiber. Seems to be a fiber from from the from the Q-tips. Yeah, and uh, I can already see the cells, but very very lightly and brightly. So what I'll be doing is I'm just gonna there's lots of other dirt on here as well. So I'm just gonna go here in the center. You might not be able to see this very well. So I'm going to go up with the magnification here. That's a ten times objective. Let's see if you're able to see a little bit more. It's overexposed. 
it is out of focus. I don't even know into which direction I have to turn this. Here we go, and here we see already the first cells. No, you don't see it because the contrast is too low. Right in the middle, you know what I'm gonna do? So I'm gonna switch over uh, to include an arrow. Yes, okay, yeah. So all of those darker dots you just ignore. These, this just dust and dirt, but over here, this is a, yeah, um, in bright field. That's, uh, um, yeah, one of the, um, one of my cheek cells here, or actually a small cluster. I see one, two, three, four, five of them. I'm going to go up yet higher. Okay. Yeah, here, now you're able to see them much better. Okay. And so you see the contrast is quite low, um, but it is possible to see them, of course. Actually, there are not that many cells here. I mean, uh, when you scratch off the cells a little bit more aggressively using your fingernail, maybe you get many more of them. But here, for example, it's another one. That's another one. Just want to show you right now how it looks in bright field so that you're able to see the difference later on. Um, yeah, so I'm going to move uh, this 20 times objective. Now this is the 40 times. I have to also adjust the condenser. Here we go. Of course, the higher we go up with the magnification, the darker the image becomes. Um, I now set the camera to manual exposure, therefore the camera does not adjust um, the exposure. Yeah, but I think you get the point. Forget all of those gray dots here in the background, okay? All of those gray dots here, uh, which are out of focus, that's all dust and dirt. Yeah, let's see, see? What is this, I, I don't know, it's something, something on, the, on the slide. Yeah? So, and you see that there are streaks uh, so the slide has not been uh, properly cleaned, but he, here we go. That is, uh, th these are basically skin cells, of course, skin cells, ah. epithelial cells of my, the inside of my cheek. Just wanted to say that uh, they are flat as many of the skin cells. So um, yeah, so this is basically 40 times. Um, and um, what I'm gonna be doing now is, is I'm gonna switch over to DIC. I'm going to increase the, um, intensity a little bit, I'm going to move in the, the prism. Um, yeah, I need to go up a little bit yet further with the uh, brightness. Um, I can adjust the top prism as well. And you know what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm just going to remove the arrow because, no, that's the wrong one, see? Uh, here we go, yes, okay. So um, now you basically see the whole thing in DIC. Here, it's in a second, second one over here. Still a little bit too dark to go up a little bit and let's open the condenser a little bit. Yeah, and you see that uh, it will give you uh, a slightly three-dimensional appearance. Um, so it is similar to oblique illumination. So if you have a bright field microscope with a filter holder, um, yeah, try oblique illumination. Put a, a dark field patch stop into your filter holder and then uh, rotate or swing out the filter a little bit so that the light uh, strikes the specimen from the side. Then it will look uh, quite similar. Um, yeah, and uh, however, this of course does not mean uh, that this is the actual shape um, of the cell. So this uh, kind of, it gives a three-dimensional impression, but this three-dimensional impression does not reflect the actual three-dimensional nature. But especially on the bottom one here, um, the one that's right now in the center, you can actually see two nuclei. These are actually two different cells sticking together. Turn on, yeah. So you see over here, that is one nucleus. And uh, right next to it here, this is another nucleus. So there are two cells, uh, yeah, sticking together. And uh, here we are again. Yeah, and if I shift the top uh, prism, yeah, that's not dark field either. Um, it might not actually even work well in dark field because the refractive index difference is uh, so, so small. You can see that you can actually rotate through the different colors. Yeah. There's, there's plenty to play around with, yeah. So, but that is basically DIC. Um, yeah, you know, for the fun of it, let's go up uh, with, uh, to the 60 times objective. And uh, of course I need to uh, increase the intensity a little bit again. So I'm opening up the condenser as a matter of fact. Yeah, and uh, that's how it looks like, okay? Yeah, you see, I'm focusing back and forth. And uh, there, I can actually also rotate. Uh, there is a ring to rotate on the 60 times objective to adjust for the thickness uh, of the cover glass. So I'm, I'm not, I'm just now rotating the adjustment ring on the objective, okay? Yeah, there's not so much of a difference. You might see a little difference. So I'm not focusing, okay? I'm just adjusting the, the objective now. Yeah, so this is basically, um, yeah, now so you have seen, let, let's look at this, uh, also at this magnification using Brightfield, just a second. I'm going to 
yeah, okay, that, that is the bright field uh, image, okay? So this is basically what you're gonna see you know, with a bright field microscope and you, you're still able to see this, okay? So um, what I'm going to do now is the following. Yeah, uh, I'm going to now um, do the same thing again and I'm going to now stain everything with uh, methylene. No, I forgot to do something. I forgot to actually show it to you in phase contrast. That's what I wanted to do, okay? Yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm going to, yeah, switch over to phase uh, contrast, um, of course. That's something I need to adjust the condenser first. And uh, where is my phase? 40 times phase contrast. So, okay, rotate, 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 and ha, ah, here, this here is now phase contrast. Okay. And so you see again that it looks uh, quite different. Um, you will notice that the structures seem to have a bright halo around them. That's, of course, an artifact. Yeah, but it's, this is now basically 40 times phase contrast. Yeah. Yeah. I'm closing the condenser up, oh, that was too much. Closing the condenser too much a little bit. Um, now I'm closing also, this is now the, 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 uh, the Köhler diaphragm, the field diaphragm. You know, you, you open it a little bit more, okay. So yeah, so these are basically a couple of skin cells. Skin cells, why do we keep on saying skin cells? I don't know why, okay. So this is uh, in any case, yeah, epithelial cheek cells here. Here is another one. Okay. Uh, the nucleus is always quite nicely visible. What about this one over here? Uh, one or two of them sticking together. They're not that many cells. I mean, I already uh, have taken samples from my cheek. Yeah, it was actually very dense. So uh, maybe those uh, Q-tips are a little bit too too soft, okay? Yeah, so that is a uh, phase contrast. Um, I just want to say that uh, um, different uh, um, different specimens are suitable for different um, uh, microscopic techniques, of course. So, yeah, you cannot say that one technique is better than the other. There are some techniques uh, that simply work better with some specimens than others. So yeah, each type of uh, configuration, microscope configuration has its own world, so to say, okay? Um, so there was something else I wanted to do. Yeah, actually something quite interesting. There is, it's possible to actually combine phase contrast with DIC. Um, I've, uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna show this to you as, um, also. So this is now phase contrast and look what happens when I move in the DIC prism. And um, you have some interesting um, overlap between, it's kind of very dark, okay? But you do have an interesting overlap. Let me rotate the top one here between DIC and, and, and phase contrast. So I'm, I'm rotating the, the, the top, not rotating, I'm, I'm shifting the top uh, uh, prism here. Yeah. So um, it's a, a, new, a new thing that I've uh, <laughs> discovered as well. Okay, yeah, just, uh, yeah. Yeah, just wanted to show this to you. Um, now let's do the following. Let's uh, repeat the whole thing, but this time I would like to stain the cells with methylene blue. And then we're gonna look at it again on the bright field. Um, and what I would like to do, however differently, is the following. I'm going to um, add the methylene blue after I put the slide um, on the microscope. And the reason is, is I want to show you how the methylene blue actually spreads across the slide and how then the cells will absorb the stain. Um, that's interesting the, is the following, that the cells will become more blue than the surrounding, okay? Because they accumulate, they build up uh, uh, the stain. Um, and I just wanna show this to you. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do the following. I'm just gonna take again, yeah, a, a sample. I also have a, yeah, a toothpick this time. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see how, how well this works. Yeah, there seems to be more stuff here now. Yeah, because I've been scratching off some material more aggressively. Okay, so what I'll be doing now is, is I'm gonna be placing, uh, I mean, there are different methods, yeah? Um, but I'm gonna flip this down again here, okay? So what I'll be doing is, is without adding any water, um, I'm going to put this on top here. And uh, then um, I'm going to apply um, some methylene blue here on the side and it will be sucked in uh, using capillary action. When doing stuff like this, you gotta you got be careful because you don't wanna spill any of the stain on your microscope, of course. So what I shall be doing is, is see, and that's the thing, I don't, have a con I don't have anything here right now. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna use another slide here um, because I 
want to be a little bit more careful with this. So I'm going to be using my other pipette. You can also use tweezers to do this. Ah, gee, that's basically, this is what happens. Look, yeah. <laughs> stain everywhere. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll be doing the following. A little bit here. So that is not the slide with the specimen, okay? That's a, a fresh slide. So just using this here to, to suck up some of the some of the stain, so it's gonna be easier for me to apply it. Okay, you get the idea. Yeah, so let's just do it like this. Put it away. So this one over here now goes directly under the microscope again. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, I always need to switch back and forth here. So I'm gonna remove this, the old one here, and I'm gonna start again with a low power magnification. So, up, another slide, not the one that I want. So let's flip out the condenser. Let's open the field. They have to change the condenser. Okay, here we are again in bright field. I need to find, I need to pull out the prism as well. Oh, what a mess. Okay. Ah, lots of cells here. Okay, but it doesn't look very nice because there is no water around it. So you don't see anything because again, it is too bright. Here we go, okay? It doesn't look like anything, um, okay? But all of the, these things here, um, yeah, these are all cells. I'm now using the four times low power. Um, again, no, no water. So this means that uh, the resolution is not gonna be so nice. Here you see them a little bit better. This is now the 10 times magnifying um, objective. There's lots of dust and dirt also on the slide here. And I'll be now doing the following. Um, I'm going to, uh, yeah, um, add now um, over here the the, um, the the methylene blue, the Löffler solution it's called. Um, and then you're gonna be able to see what happens. So, so um, let's see if this actually works. Okay, so it might actually, uh, some of the cells might actually be swept away. Oh, okay, I'm not pushing on the, uh, even this one is not so easy. Ah, and what do I see? Yeah, it's kind of slowly spreading but it didn't reach the place yet. So let, let me move over a little bit. Ha! What did I promise you? So here, here it is where the stain is. Um, you, there is a little bit of alcohol in the stain and therefore it kind of mixes now with the liquid, with the water. And look what happens as the methylene blue slowly spreads over. Okay. Let me see where, where is it? Where are the cells? Here, here, here it might be some of the cells. No, I, I gotta find. I gotta find something interesting first. Look, that's interesting. Ha ha! This is something that I also cannot fully explain. Look, look those cells here. That's that's actually quite interesting. Look, those cells here. They are already stained, but the stain did not even reach them yet. How how is this possible? No, no, seriously, I seriously don't know. Could it be that there are some kind of fumes maybe or some kind of, that the methylene blue kind of evaporated and stained the cells? No, I seriously, uh, um, I seriously don't, cannot explain this, okay? But you see that uh, on, the, on the left side here, this is where the liquid is. And, and it seems to stain the cells even though it did not reach them yet. So this one over here, this is the, the, the side of the cover glass. Okay, so we're now basically outside of the cover glass here. Uh, some of the, this is strange. Honestly, um, I cannot fully explain. See, there's some air bubbles here. Or it could be, or it could be, I think that might be the, the explanation. I think that's the explanation. See, um, there are air bubbles here. Um, over here, there are air bubbles. And here, the background, this is already where the methylene blue is, okay? but it is so bright that you almost don't see it. And uh, the cells, uh, the cheek cells, they are now stained blue, okay? Yeah, so that's very clear here. Um, all of this pl uh, pl uh, place here. And why does this look so strange here? This is not the... Ah, okay, problem solved, problem solved, okay. Um, this here, uh, basically I got some methylene blue on top of the cover glass, okay? 
So this is um, over here, this is, there is no cover glass here, methylene blue on top of the cover glass, on top of the cover glass. So I spilled some stuff on top. And this is now the methylene blue, which has uh, moved uh, below the cover glass, but it's so thin, this, the, the layer, film, the, the, the layer, that um, it does, the background does not appear to be blue, okay? And that's why uh, the cells have uh, been stained. By the way, this is now uh, the 10 times uh, magnifying objective. So what I'm gonna be doing now is I'm just gonna go up with the magnification. Okay. Oh, of course, this explains any. So now I gotta be super careful because I don't wanna rotate uh, the next objective into the methylene blue, but there is still a distance. Okay, so this actually does work. Yeah, yeah of course. Now, now we also clearly see it. I mean, there are air bubbles here. Yeah here on, on the top on the top right and these are now the cells that have been stained okay and you can also see very carefully that the nuclei they are actually much uh, darker um, than the surrounding cells yeah, the, the surrounding cells i mean uh, the cytoplasm the rest of the cells yeah. yep so again you can also see here that as the, this is like actually also quite nice one. Um, over here in the middle, uh, this is, uh, these are non-stained cells. Um, and uh, these are non-stained cells here in, in the middle. No, oh, let's go here back again, okay. Um, these cells here obviously are stained and you can see as the um, methylene blue diffuses inwards here, uh, more the cells become, also in the center, become more and more stained. Okay. Yes. So uh, again, I know, at, even at the risk of repeating myself, uh, the, the, the principle here is, is, is that uh, the cells that you want to stain, that they start to build up uh, the, the stain and uh, become darker than the surrounding. If you use concentrated methylene blue, everything's going to be dark blue and you will not be able to see the contrast quite nicely. Yeah. You can see here as well, always on the side where it contacts the stain, this is where it turns blue first. And uh, the cells here in the middle, they have not yet been stained because I did not give the slide enough time yet for the methylene blue to diffuse. But actually this is kind of interesting, you know, um, I did not add any water. So uh, why are there, and this is kind of what confuses me a little bit now, is, is why is it that there are bubbles here in the center and uh, so there must be water. This must be the moisture from, yeah, from my mouth, actually. Because uh, those cells here are surrounded by liquid. Um, I mean, otherwise, the methylene blue would have soaked in directly. Or, next hypothesis, maybe the stain also is in the middle right now, but maybe only the liquid part because of all the methylene blue itself has been already removed by the outer layer of cells here. So this could be another explanation here. So that maybe even the liquid of the stain actually also has reached the center here, but all of the stain, the methylene blue itself might have already been removed by the outer cells here. Hypothesis, hypothesis, hypothesis. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, why, there must be liquid in here, right? Uh, there is definitely liquid in here, in the middle, because uh, otherwise uh, there wouldn't be any air bubbles here. And otherwise uh, the stain itself, the solution itself would have immediately gone in. Hmm, interesting. And let's get a larger overview. So I'm going to go down from back to, oh, just a second, forgot to flip up the, the condenser a little bit. So, yeah, so that's a better overview. Let's go down a little bit with the thing here. Yeah. Very nicely, uh, you can now see how the outer parts are stained first. And of course, <laughs> because I use the tooth toothpick, uh, the density of cells here is of course much greater. Yeah, look at this. It actually looks, looks quite nice. <laughs> Okay, I, I think I think enough. Uh, um, yeah, enough for today. Um, where am I again? I still have to switch back and forth with, uh, you know, for, with the computer here. Yeah, I think I think uh, I'm just gonna quit uh, for today. Um, if you like these type of uh, yeah videos, please do leave a comment. It would be highly appreciated if you also subscribe to this channel. Of course, I do have also Patreon supporters. A big thank you to them. 
um, because uh, yeah, it supports the channel. I can buy also new things to do reviews and all these things because I do have a second channel as well. I have a second uh, microscopy channel as well. The links are all below. It's called uh, also on YouTube uh, Micro Hunter uh, Microscopy. So the name is quite similar, but uh, it, the other channel is a little bit more technical in nature. We talk more about the microscope hardware. Um, yeah, so that's it for this uh, for this uh, time. Uh, if you have any suggestions of what you want me to put under the microscope, uh, please yeah do do inform me. Um, write some comments. Happy micro hunting as always. I'll see you around next time and uh, bye 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 bye.